2019 is the 40th anniversary of St. John's original local television station. Founded in 1979, SJM Cablevision was perfectly positioned to offer a unique enterprise with the simultaneous introduction of home video equipment. Professional video equipment was very expensive in those days, but the Cutright family, creators of SJM Cablevision, wanted to include a local channel in their services. Utilizing their own adaptation to the equipment on the market, Channel 9 was born. The first program to air was the 1979 St. John Centennial Parade, which was originally captured on 8mm film, transferred to videotape via a rear projection film unit, and then played back over Channel 9. During the 80s, videotape recorders quickly advanced from large console units to shoulder-carried portable units and finally to one-piece camcorders. With each upgrade, more events could be captured, and in 1984, in a cooperative effort with the St. John Business Association, local news was added to Channel 9. The Cutwrights sold SJM Cablevision in 1988. David Cutright continued the local channel through early 1990 until the Sandyland Shepherd Center purchased the studio equipment. Channel 9's television service then continued operated and maintained by the center's volunteers. Now, almost 41 years later, the legacy of local hometown flavored news continues into the 21st century thanks to many new advances in technology and equipment and the availability of YouTube and other social media outlets. A new studio using the still local cable channel 3 has been on cable and online since February the 16th of 2018. A staggering 300 plus new videos have been uploaded to the Shepherd Center's YouTube channel since. And with two weekly news telecasts, City Council, County Commission and School Board meetings, and school and local events to document, you can count on many more. If you had your own TV station and could show whatever you wanted, what would it be like? For a St. John family, that has become a reality, and the shows are just like home. For St. John residents, local television is a family affair. Mom runs the office, Dad is the electronic genius, David runs the board for studio and remote operations, and Martha coordinates news for schools. The other jobs get done with a little teamwork and lots of volunteers. The television station idea was born seven years ago when they decided to provide tape delay TV. coverage of a St. John Jubilee. We had one camera and one little black first recorder on the market and went down and taped that, came up here and switched it into our Channel 9, which was a little carousel rig at that time. Mm -hmm. And then people seeing that asked for a little bit more, so we got some things built and went to shoot, uh, I think it was a little preschool thing, and then some things at the school and people ask us for a little bit more and we'd go build some more equipment and go this and it just kept growing. And the latest big accomplishment for the family, a three camera remote show for the Stafford Centennial last year. Family members say time limitations keep them from doing a lot more, but what they do is appreciated. You can turn on any TV channel there and get national news from who knows where all the way around the world, but you turn on Channel 9 and you can watch St. John News, and people like hometown flavored news. Usually your thoughts always on others. You don't have time to think about yourself or what's in there. It's always an opportunity to reach out to people and we're of course this town's full of shut-ins you know, and that's great to be able to reach out to them it's good for the community it's good community service and it kind of pulls the community together and i think it's it's needed and you know with the size of the operation why we can't put a lot of money into it so it's just volunteer work and i enjoy it the things people like are involvement and while you may think kids would shy away from a camera the fourth grade teacher says it started with her daughter doing school news as a fill-in for the local newscast it grew to what it is today they know they're going to be reading in front of a lot of people and they're conscious of that and uh, when we read through the news before we come we find out how to sound out words and where the short vowels are and the long vowels and it becomes more real to them and running the TV station is now real to the family in fact, the only problem they don't have to worry about is answering the question, what will you do tomorrow? Beats me. Nobody really has to think of anything to go to around here. Ideas just keep coming up. Can you do this or will you do this? And we're stupid enough we don't say no. We try it. And uh, 
build something if we don't have it. <laughs> One thing about the group is they're always looking for volunteers, and if you walk in thinking you're going to get out of some work, don't think so. You don't just watch, you always get involved. And that's news from here tonight. Stay tuned. Weather's coming up next with Mike Smith on KSN. In St. John, Kansas, over in Stafford County, there is this tiny cable TV station. Now, some may call it Grassroots TV, but whatever it's called, it's become an integral part of that community. Tonight on Hatterberg's People, we profile the volunteers of the St. John Shepherd Center who make it all happen. Today and tomorrow, we're going to have fair and windy weather. The temperature today, the high will be 90, tomorrow 93. We're, we're the only one of the hundred Shepherd Centers in the country that, that has a television station. Mm -hmm. In uh, other places, this would be called the town's senior center. You do so many things around here automatic, everyone just pitches in. These volunteers are part of a non-denominational religious-based organization that helps senior citizens maintain a higher quality of life. Nineteen minutes away. And while they provide <laughs> all types of elder care for the community, it is the TV station that makes it special. Some of the income from the television station helps to support a, a lot of the programs that we do so that we can do a lot of programs for free that other people would have to charge at their senior center. By commercial broadcast standards, it's a modest operation, but that isn't the point. You're gonna be around Jim Lakey and two. Steve no, Freach prepare to, to do a brief newscast coach. for both St. John and Maxville. Like uh, they do it from the Shepherd Center Makes on no cable TV. <laughs> and, uh, and then we have some people to say happy anniversary and happy birthday to. If you have any extra technicians out there at Cape, uh, we could use some here. <laughs> Over there, that's volunteer Pat Minx and Pastor Harlan Ritgers. They're updating information about St. John and Maxville on the computer that goes over the cable TV system. Yeah. Just before the news, uh, we come out and take a look at our neighbor bank, and they have the temperature and the time. When the local paper boy arrives, that's important, too, because some of the news comes from these pages. I may forget that something's going to happen, or perhaps no one ever told me. It's almost news time now. Jim and Steve are standing by. We need to email cake on your side and tell no, them to get a teleprompter, Jim. That, we don't want to look too unprofessional. Folks here enjoy these moments. Good afternoon. This is Jim Lakey with today's news. We're broadcasting from Sandy Land Shepherd Center <clears throat> in St. John Square on cable channel 9. This is real local TV. Uh, we have intergenerational programs, we have shopping trips. Now, commercial broadcast stations bus, like uh, ours can't cover these small makes, towns uh, with this Tuesday kind of news, but it's important nevertheless, seniors, and to it works. Saint this is Jim Lakey hoping that you do take the opportunity to smell the roses. That's a wrap. <laughs> The Shepherd Center in St. John helps in many other ways, too. They provide medical assistance to the elderly, exercise programs, lunch and learn seminars, and a host of other services. But their TV program service helps the whole town. Next week, more Hatterberg's People stories. I'll see you then. What about the next 40 years? That will be up to the next generation of volunteers. Also, the last three days of the state of St. John, I will be covering some Cub Scouts this evening in the video house to bring a show to you Wednesday. Our